I guess I decided to jump off a cliff. How did you land? Tonight on 2020, breaking tonight, 20 the women who John took Gary. on and took down the most powerful man in television news, Roger Ailes. He tried to kiss me three times. Charges of sexual harassment against him. Is this really happening to some of the most powerful women in television news? Gretchen Carlson speaking only to 2020 in her first television interview after that landmark lawsuit. After accusing former Fox News CEO Roger Ailes. And groundbreaking apology from Fox News. Look at how we react to women when they finally do come forward. They're accused of making it up. Revealing tonight how she says she was harassed by others back when she was Miss America. He took my head and he shoved my face into his crotch. The fears of speaking out. You don't want to make waves. You're going to lose your job. You're going to be that woman. But what about this woman saying she was pressured into a relationship with Roger Ailes? I got a, a promotion. He really let me know. I want you to show me some gratitude. As for in the, uh, sexual? Yes. Gratitude. He said that I needed training. You needed training? Tonight, powerful women telling their stories. I consider myself to be a pretty damn strong woman. With a message for every woman in the workplace. Why don't we say anything? Crossing the lines, women and men at work. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. And I'm David Muir, and we're coming to you tonight from right here at our offices at 2020, the kind of work cubicles familiar to so many offices around this country. But what might also be familiar, and sadly, is that one in four women nationwide say they've experienced sexual harassment at work. And at every level, from cubicles to corner offices. And tonight, the high-powered woman whose lawsuit brought down a TV giant, speaking only to 2020. Gretchen Carlson, a huge name, reporting the news and then becoming the news. A media and political bombshell. It was a spellbinding summer surprise. Major change at Fox News. CEO Roger Ailes has handed in his resignation. Mr. Ailes, how are you? A lawsuit that helped bring down a titan of television. Roger Ailes, the founder and force behind Fox News, accused of sexually harassing one of his network's on-air stars. On what Richter scale was the earthquake that Gretchen Carlson started by filing this lawsuit against Roger Ailes? It was off the charts. I mean, nothing like that had ever really happened at Fox News before. Sarah Ellison has reported extensively for Vanity Fair on Fox News and the legend of Roger Ailes. He takes a lot of credit and deserves a lot of credit for creating the success of Fox News. And you can see when you look at the channel, you're looking at his vision. So, can a four-year-old be a pinhead? A vision that included a signature hook. Big balance. And some say a signature look, which you could spot the minute you turned it on. When I turn from NBC to CNN to Fox, you can tell a difference. The dresses are tighter, the skirts are shorter. The sort of famous leg cam, which is a camera that sort of shoots at a particular angle so that you can see that her legs are crossed and her, her thigh is sort of revealed. Belinda Lescombe wrote a cover story about Gretchen Carlson for Time magazine. Gretchen joked about this when she went on to a radio show and she got to wear jeans and she said it's so great to be on radio because I can wear pants for a change. In her skirts and dresses, Carlson was on the set of the popular morning show Fox and Friends where she was co-anchor for seven years. Start from scratch. Good morning, everyone. In her lawsuit against Ailes, Carlson alleged that behind the sunny morning show exterior was a hostile workplace, more reminiscent of a locker room than a newsroom. You read the headlines since men are so great. She names her co-anchor, Steve Ducey, yes. in the lawsuit. I mean, she's, she talks about how he demeaned her. He pulled her arm to get her to be quiet in various moments. She did go to Roger Ailes to complain about the behavior of her co-host on Fox and Friends. He was not a sympathetic ear. No, instead of having Roger Ailes say, oh, we'll be sure to do something about that, he lashes out at her and he calls her a man-hater and he says she should try to get along with the boys. Carlson claims that shortly after she complained, Ailes demoted her, moving her off the morning show to a less desirable time slot in the afternoon. Hi everyone, I'm Gretchen Carlson and this is The Real Story. But it gets worse. In Carlson's complaint, she says Ailes then began sexually harassing her, making comments in one-on-one -on -one meetings like, 
I think you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago, adding that sometimes problems are easier to solve that way. When she rejected his advances, Carlson says Ailes retaliated, sabotaging her career. But Gretchen Carlson wasn't about to fade away without a fight. A lot of the people I interviewed about Gretchen thought, well, Gretchen is somebody who always does her homework. She's super prepared. So she would not have launched this without having the goods. She starts to, to tape her meetings with Roger. And it's at this point where he sort of begins to say things to her that she includes in the lawsuit later. The man who ruled Fox News like an empire, who even had a camera trained outside his office to see who was approaching, was walking into a trap. It is ironic that here's this person who's so famously paranoid about people trying to get him, who then is brought down by having someone just record him very simply with her iPhone. Last June, with Carlson still quietly gathering evidence, Ailes abruptly fired her. Two weeks later, she shot back with her explosive lawsuit. Fox News' dirty laundry was now its own top story. Fox News chairman Roger Ailes is responding to a lawsuit filed by lawyers for Gretchen Carlson. What was the initial reaction toward Gretchen? Uh, I mean, it was, it was horrendous. One personality after another came out and said, it doesn't sound true to me. I've, Roger's never said anything like that around me. So what did you think when you heard this? I've worked for Roger Ailes for 20 years, all right? Best boss I've ever had. I stand behind Roger 100%. Along with Bill uh, O'Reilly, well, Geraldo Rivera, Greta Van Susteren, Sean Hannity, all lined up to back the boss. And Fox News's Britt Hume tweeted, why didn't she quit and sue instead of suing only after she got fired? If you speak up when you're first hired, you're considered a troublemaker. If you speak up when you leave, it's considered sour grapes. As soon as Carlson filed her lawsuit against Ailes, Fox News parent company, 21st Century Fox, launched an internal investigation. I think from that moment forward, the die was cast. I mean, they kind of knew that if you went digging, you were going to find something. And what the law firm conducting the investigation found was at least a dozen women willing to talk, some of whom had strikingly similar stories about Roger Ailes. And it gave the story a level of credence that it wasn't just Gretchen Carlson. There were other women. The crisis came to a crescendo when one woman, who was noticeably absent from the Ailes chorus of defenders, well, finally Megan spoke Kelly. up. Megan Kelly. The highest profile female anchor at Fox News had also been allegedly harassed by Roger Ailes. Listen, it's hard to say no to that. Just this week, no Megyn Kelly appeared on Good Morning America, describing in detail but what she says happened to her. It culminated in a physical attempt to be with me, which I rejected in his office. And then I contacted a lawyer. He tried to kiss me three times. Uh, so I rejected that. And when I rejected that, he asked me when my contract was up. It's a fantastic deconstruction of the myth that only shy little violets get harassed. Only weak women who aren't in power get harassed. Women deal with it all the time. Everywhere. In every industry, everywhere. Kelly's claims would spell the end for Roger Ailes at Fox News, but it all started with Gretchen Carlson. If Gretchen Carlson hadn't sued, would Roger Ailes still be the chairman of Fox News? I think so. I think so. Just two weeks after she filed her lawsuit, Ailes arrived at work to find he had been locked out of the company he created. The next day, it was announced he was resigning as chief executive. In September, 21st Century Fox settled with Gretchen Carlson, agreeing to pay her a staggering $20 million and offering a rare public apology, saying, we sincerely regret that Gretchen was not treated with the respect and dignity that she and all of our colleagues deserve. Women do not normally get an apology when something like this happens. And I think that that was extraordinarily important. Roger Ailes has vehemently denied all of the allegations of sexual assault against him. But in perhaps the truest testament to the Herculean feat Carlson accomplished, some of those familiar Fox faces who supported Ailes have now offered her an apology. I don't think it's overstating it to say that Gretchen Carlson toppled an empire. When we come back, the woman at the epicenter of what became a TV news earthquake. 
Gretchen Carlson speaks to Amy Robach next. Twenty twenty continues. Here's Amy Robach. We women need more women like you to speak up about this injustice. This one says, I want to praise and commend you for your bravery and strength for coming forward and paving the way for other women who are experiencing a horrible situation. Gretchen Carlson reading just a small sampling of the letters she's received since becoming cast unwittingly in the role of warrior for women against workplace sexual harassment. Um, this one really caught my eye because it's from a father. Here's what he says. I can point my daughter to you and tell her, you see what this woman did? It takes courage, but this is what you must do. And he says to me, so thank you. And if possible, I can only hope that the sharing of this part of your life story will encourage others to stand up and keep it real. You've become a hero for so many women who have been sexually harassed in the workplace. And I can see you getting emotional right now. Mm -hmm. Because I never thought I was gonna be in this position, you know. For those who think they know Carlson and followed her career, she may seem miscast. Her viewpoints, typically traditional, often conservative. And then there's the fact she's a former Miss America. What does that crown mean to you today? You know, it's still something that, that I'm very proud of. Can you understand why some people think you're an unlikely feminist abuse. Oh, I know, I don't like that title. Listen, I have been fighting for women my entire life. People who've known me all along know that about me. For Carlson, step one in that fight is dispelling misconceptions, both about sexual harassment and herself. We met Carlson at her home in Greenwich, Connecticut, where she lives with her husband of 19 years, high-powered sports agent Casey Close, and their two children, Kaya 13 and Christian 11. Your life has completely changed. I guess I decided to jump off a cliff. How did you land? Every day has been a new experience. But to understand how Carlson found herself at that precipice, it helps to understand where she got that strong sense of self. Raised in Anoka, Minnesota, a suburb of the Twin Cities, best known for being the Halloween capital of the world. She was, by her own admission, a very precocious little girl. Tell me about your childhood. It was an idyllic upbringing. My grandfather was the minister at the Lutheran Church. My dad owned a car dealership in town. My mom was the consummate volunteer. I grew up thinking that I could be anything I wanted to be in this world because my mom told me that every single night. Faith and family, the Carlson cornerstones, and by kindergarten, one more. Violin. I love um, what you said about your violin. You said finding the right instrument is like falling in love. <laughs> you fell in love with the violin? Yes, by happenstance. <laughs> I wanted to play the piano. Teacher said my hands were too small. So really it was a fluke that I ended up with the violin. She was a natural by age 13 playing solos with the Minnesota Orchestra. And she didn't just excel in music. Carlson was also a straight A student graduating top of her class. How important was that to you to be the best? I think that's just the way that I had lived my life, was trying to excel at everything that I tried to achieve. Her parents were thinking Juilliard, but Carlson chose Stanford. It ended up working out okay because then my mom got this crazy idea. <laughs> to go for Miss America. Right. And she kept saying to me, Gretchen, 50% of your points are based on talent. You have that. She took it on, she says, equating it with going for Olympic gold, first winning Miss Cottage Grove, then Miss Minnesota. Miss Minnesota is Gretchen Carlson. Then in Atlantic City at 22, she wowed the crowd with her performance of Sarasat Zagunerweisen. And was crowned Miss America. Miss America is Gretchen Carlson. It immediately changed what I thought I was going to do with the rest of my life. The turning point? This cameo on a bloopers and practical joke show. Problem was, Carlson didn't know the joke was on her. And our next practical joke victim was not all that easy to victimize. So it was Dick Clark and Ed McMahon. And it was a week after 
I had been crowned Miss America. And it was some complicated satellite system, and I was just supposed to be there on stage to introduce it. Little did she know, the Miss America co-hosts were in on the ruse. Now our accomplices were Gary Collins and Marianne Mobley, and they really, really made it work. They got called off the set. Emergency phone call, Gary's microphone doesn't work. Suddenly I'm there by myself. Just introduce yourself and just ad lib a little bit for it because it's, it's not going to, it's very informal, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And the floor director says to me, Oh my gosh, we're going live to 5,000 engineers earlier than we thought in four, three, two, just start talking. Hi, I'm glad to be back with you this morning. I'm Gretchen Carlson, the new Miss America. They put cue cards up, every word was 17 letters long, then they dropped them on the floor. Gretchen! <laughs> You're on Super Bloopers and Practical Jokes! <laughs> <laughs> when that finally aired, I got calls from TV agents saying, have you ever thought about doing TV? If you can do that, you can do TV. So I decided to give it a shot. But seeking the glare of television lights, Carlson says she would find something sinister lurking in the shadows. During your reign as Miss America, when you were then seeking that TV job, you thought, okay, let me, let me go meet with people and see how I get into this business, how I do it right. You actually had your first real encounter with sexual harassment. Tell me about that. I did, and it was a shocking experience because with this particular man, he spent most of the day helping me. He made a lot of phone calls for me, and I thought, wow, this guy's being so nice. And we went to dinner, and we were in the back seat of a car going to my college friend's apartment at the end of the evening. And before I knew it, he was on top of me, and his tongue was down my throat. And I was like, whoa, I, this wasn't part of the deal. And I quickly got out of the car, and I was flustered and started sobbing. And I remember being inconsolable um, and thinking, well, I'll never speak to him again, and I didn't. Sadly, she says, it wouldn't be her only encounter. And unfortunately, a couple of weeks later, the same thing happened to me again in Los Angeles with a very high-powered PR executive who is still a very high-powered PR executive. And again, we were in a car, and he took my head and my neck, and he shoved my face into his crotch so forcefully that I couldn't breathe. Did you blame so, yourself? I think to a certain part, yeah, you, you think, I must have done something. What did I do to invite this? Right. What did I do? Up next, Gretchen Carlson's in front of the camera. But what happened behind the camera's eye? And this time I was in the workplace, so it was different. When 2020 continues. Gretchen Carlson first arrived in New York in the fall of 1988, taking a victory lap as the new reigning Miss America. But she soon learned not everyone respects the crown. It was really upsetting because it was actually a female reporter who really tried to take me down at my first press conference in New York City. What is real on you and what isn't real? Everything on me is real. Your hair is that natural color? Except for a few highlights. A few highlights? Yes. Where are they? Could you show us? <laughs> I don't know. They, they pick them out just randomly when they do it. Carlson says the brash and unabashed local news fixture, Penny Crone, apparently thought she'd found a beauty queen she could bully. She basically said, I'm here to give you a test because people say you're smart. Do you know who's on the $20 bill? Uh, no. <laughs> you know who's on the $5 bill? Lincoln, I believe. And she finally ended her barrage of questions by saying, Have you had sex yet, or are you waiting to get married? Uh, no comment on that. But Crone wouldn't be the last to learn. This was no shrinking violet. It was pretty astonishing for a 22-year-old woman who had just accomplished something pretty spectacular to be faced with that kind of demeaning question. Carlson refused to be rattled, and she also refused to forget that encounter. About 10 years later, I ran into that same reporter, and I thought, should I? And I said, yes. I said, you don't remember who I am, but when I was Miss America, you tried to take me down. And I just want to let you know that I'm now a correspondent for CBS News, and you're not. And it felt fantastic. <laughs> but learning to stand up for herself only came with time. Early in her TV career, 
Carlson says she was sexually harassed once again. I think I had only been working maybe three to six months. It was a photographer. It was a photographer, and he put the microphone under my blouse. I still remember it was a blue blouse. She considered it fairly routine until back in the news van. She says the cameraman began making sexually suggestive comments about her breasts. He started asking me questions about how I felt when he had to touch my private parts. And I thought, whoa, uh, this is not a safe conversation. This was before cell phones and we were in a rural area. And I had the ability to go to a payphone to get help, but I didn't. Why? Well, I'd only been in this job for a couple of months and I didn't want to cause any waves. She planned to stay silent, but then, she says, her news director noticed she was visibly shaken. He was asking me many times what was wrong, and I kept saying nothing. He said, no, I really want to know what's wrong. And so I, I told him. When situations like that happen to women, you fear that it's going to be your fault. You're not going to be believed. You're going to lose your job. You're going to be that woman. You're going to be that woman. You're that a troublemaker, troublemaker, not a whistleblower. Exactly. A troublemaker. Always the journalist, Carlson must have noticed a tinge of familiarity mixed in with my empathy. I'm just going to go out on a limb and ask if sexual harassment's ever happened to you. It has, and it's something that I think has happened to so many women, and most of us say nothing. I know that when I have young women who are getting into the business, I always want to warn them. If someone who is higher up than you suddenly asks you to dinner, it's not always to tell you what a great employee that you are, but sometimes you just have to be aware that there are ulterior motives. And whether or not you say anything. Most of us don't. Mm -hmm. Why don't we say anything? I think that's part of the battle for some women. They think if I just work a little bit harder, all this will go away. But I don't think we should judge women if they have waited. Because look at how we react to women when they finally do come forward. They're accused of making it up. Do you remember the moment when you said to yourself, I'm ready and I'm prepared to take on the most powerful man in television? I wish I could answer that, but I can't. Because of her landmark settlement agreement with Fox News, Carlson was unable to answer any of those questions about the allegations she made after her departure. But she's coming forward tonight because she believes she has invaluable advice for other women who've been sexually harassed in the workplace. How important is actual evidence in proving a sexual harassment case? Mm. Uh, very important because of the he said, she said. But people would be very interested to know that if they're considering trying to arm themselves with any kind of evidence, you should check what your laws are in your particular state. Would you encourage women to audio tape, to record, to somehow document? I would encourage women to document, yes. Do you think that there is something particular about a woman that could make her more vulnerable to these types of workplace predators? No. And when I've heard that in recent weeks and months that, well, particular strong women, you know, they would just find another job. Really? Because I consider myself to be a pretty damn strong woman. And finding another job is not a realistic way to solve this problem. Women should not have to face this in the workplace. Period. You and I are fortunate. We have means. So a lot of people who are dealing with sexual harassment say, what am I supposed to do? I can't afford to lose this job. What do you say to those women? I say that we as a country have to come up with a solution for every single one of them. And that's what I hope to at least start the discussion on. For starters, Carlson's planning to testify before Congress against what she calls forced arbitration. The fine print in some employees' contracts that prevents them from taking harassment claims into public court. What it technically means is that if this happens to you at work, nobody will ever know about it. Carlson's also starting a foundation to help empower women. Do you feel like you've won? I can't answer specifically 
about whether or not I won in that specific case. But, boy, I hope I've helped other women to win. You just heard the story of someone who said she rejected sexual advances in the workplace. But when we come back, a woman formerly at Fox News who says she felt like she didn't dare reject them. And for the first time on camera, she's taking a huge risk right here tonight, defying her non-disclosure agreement to speak out. You just saw a powerful woman who was the face of the news, but now someone who was behind the scenes at Fox, saying she was pressured into a sexual relationship with Roger Ailes. But while she was getting promotions, she said she was also paying a price. Lori Loon worked for Roger Ailes for more than two decades, and she says for much of that time she was harassed, intimidated, and pressured into performing sexual favors. Lori's story first exploded onto the pages of New York Magazine, and now she's sharing it exclusively with us. Tell me first of all why you've decided to speak out. Elizabeth, I think that I went through such hell for so many years. I finally felt safe when I saw that other women were, were speaking up. Lori says she was a naive 28-year-old when she first met Roger Ailes while working in a low-level job on George H.W. Bush's first presidential campaign. I wanted to meet him. I wanted to work for him. I was so excited. I introduced myself to him on the elevator, and then I think later on he ran into me in the hall and was super friendly. and and had acted like he'd remembered me, and I was flattered. After the campaign ended, Lori says she was financially strapped and desperate for a job when Ailes invited her for an interview with his firm. At the meeting, she says he asked her questions that felt more personal than professional. I think that he wanted to gauge you know, what kind of a person I was, if I was insecure, if I was looking for a daddy figure. He was sussing out your vulnerabilities? Absolutely. And I was real insecure, and I was in need of a job, which is why I was there. Lori says Ailes offered her work doing research, but it soon became clear that he was interested in more than just her work. One night, Ailes was in Washington, D.C., working with President Bush on a primetime speech he was delivering that night. Lori says Ailes asked her to watch it on television and then come to his hotel room to share her feedback. And what did he tell you at that point? He said that I needed training. You needed training? I needed training. And what did you think that meant? I didn't know. I was about to find out. Lori says Ailes told her to strip down to her lingerie and dance for him. Feeling intimidated and worried for her job, she says she did as she was told. Then what did he do? He um, would have me get down on my knees and tell me, you know what you are, Lori. You're my whore. You're my sex slave. You're going to do whatever I tell you to do at any time. Do you understand that? Lori says Ailes then instructed her to perform oral sex. I didn't question it, and that was his big thing. Just don't ever question anything I ever asked you to do, Lori. Did you try to refuse? <laughs> it was too late. The, the minute it happened, I knew that I'd been blackmailed because he did take photographs of me. And he would say, this is just my little insurance policy, and I'm just going to put it in a safe deposit box just to make sure you stay loyal to me. According to Lori, that bizarre night was no aberrant incident. It would become a pattern that continued off and on for more than 20 years. He'd say, I think you need some training. I think you're slipping up or you haven't had your training lately. When Ailes launched Fox News in 1996, Lori went along first as a production assistant for Fox News Sunday. Although she was now rubbing shoulders with some of the most powerful people in Washington, she says her secret relationship with Ailes had begun to feel like psychological torture. I never told a living soul. About what was going on? Absolutely not. He reinforced with me how great he was. And he'd say, I'm your only friend. I'm the only person in the world that you can trust. You can't trust anyone else. So <laughs> you say that enough times, to someone and and it it's reality. Lori says her silence and loyalty were rewarded with higher paid positions, eventually being named the director of booking at Fox News with a six figure annual salary. But it all came at a price. Um, I got a, a promotion, a big promotion. Afterwards, I went in to see Roger. He said, so see, 
I told you I'd take care of you someday. He really let me know. I want you to show me some gratitude. As in the, uh, sexual? Yes. Gratitude? Yes. It's unbelievable that it would be that overt that, okay, you finally got this big promotion. I told you I'd take care of you. Now go strip down. And I was so excited. And then the next words were, go over to the Double Tree and thank me. I kept on thinking it would end. You know, maybe he'd stop. And I actually didn't think that it would go on at Fox, but it did continue. You know people hearing this will say, why on earth would you go along with this? It's not like I was able to go and cry on the shoulder of some friend. I was completely isolated. I was isolated in the workplace. What did you think would happen to you if you complained or tried to refuse? Have you ever seen Roger Ailes when he's unhappy? <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, it's, it's not a good sight to see. It's pretty scary. Lori says her life began to unravel in 2007 when she was demoted at Fox News because of talk in the company about her relationship with Ailes. My boss, Bill Shine, sent me to a psychiatrist and finally, for the first time in over 20 years, I spoke up and it all kind of came pouring out. Lori says the gravity of that admission triggered a nervous breakdown, landing in the hospital. Ultimately, she says she knew it was time to stand up for herself. I wrote a letter to the legal counsel at Fox News. What did you say in that letter? Well, I just said that I'd been harassed the whole time I'd been at Fox and that I'd done my job and I received no response. So it really wasn't until I, I had hired a lawyer. Within weeks of hiring that lawyer and without filing a lawsuit, Lori received a separation agreement worth more than $3 million. In 2011, after two decades of being under Ailes' control, she says she was free. ABC News reached out to Roger Ailes. He sent us this statement, which reads in part, Miss Loon is someone I once regarded as a friend and a person who I helped for many years. The stories she is telling now are fabrications built on half-truths and outright lies. So then why did Fox pay you more than $3 million. Because he knew that it was the truth. I wasn't lying. Lori says she was stunned by Gretchen Carlson's lawsuit and all the allegations that followed. I didn't realize the extent to which Roger really was a predator. Even after all she's been through, Lori admits her feelings toward Roger Ailes today remain complicated. In fact, in the summer of 2015, four years after cutting off contact with Ailes, she wrote him a letter. Why would you write him again last year asking for help finding a job? In about 1990, Roger got a hold of my brain and um, sort of let me know that I'm, he's the only one who would ever uh, believe in me. And I think that Maybe the little girl looking for the daddy figure is still saying, Roger, look at me, can you believe in me? And it's very sad. Do you think it undermines your credibility? I don't know. I don't really care. I know what happened to me. So if your boss was harassing you, would you know what to do? Let us know on Facebook and Twitter. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And you might be wondering at home, how does human resources really fit into all of this? Are they really there to help you? You may be stunned when you hear from one expert when we come back. Wow. The Wolf of Wall Street showcased rampant harassment in the seven-figure world of finance. Sexual harassment is not just something that happens in, you know, guy-dominated industries. Women deal with it all the time. Everywhere. In every industry, everywhere. Even the diner down the street. Waitress Lauren Jones says she learned that the hard way. She went to the restaurant manager after her supervisor grabbed her while she was working. Out of nowhere, I felt a firm grab on my behind, a feeling that I knew couldn't have been a mistake. And I asked him, what the hell are you doing? Lauren says she didn't want to sue, she just wanted him to stop. She was relieved when the restaurant owner and his HR rep called her into a meeting, but her husband Marvin was suspicious. I told her, when you go in there, you need to take your phone and you need to record it because it's not going to go well for you.
So Lauren hit record on her phone and headed in. The problem is you've been with us less than a month. I agree. He's been with us 15 years. I agree. And has never had anybody ever accuse him of that. I agree. Because he's never done it. Okay. So that's our position right now. The managers mentioned mistakes she made in training. They warn her that false trial testimony could land her in jail. Lauren starts to break down. This is really how you're going to treat me right now? Yes, ma'am. I don't want your money. I don't want nothing from you. All I want to do is keep my job and be well, happy like I have been. The best thing for us is I don't to want find nothing. A job somewhere else. Okay, here. and I will see you in court. Have a good day. Attorney, so am I fired? I need to know right now. By I'm not way, quitting. Not we don't you? want you to quit. We're terminating you. Okay. Right now. Glad to have You're that. Terminated. Have a good day. She went to the EEOC. It couldn't judge whether her claim was legitimate, but it did clear her to sue. She hasn't brought a suit. She can't afford it. The restaurant chain insists it only fired her for her performance problems. She's very courageous. Unfortunately, former HR executive Cynthia Shapiro says Lauren made some key mistakes. She told them that she didn't want to sue. Don't share that. Don't give away your leverage. Don't, don't go on one isolated incident. She warns rushing to HR right away may not always be the answer. We walk into HR they're usually a sympathetic presence. They're very easy to talk to, and they're the ones in charge of benefits and barbecues and all those nice things. And they'll say, oh, that's terrible. Okay, we're going to take your whole statement, but you're not giving a statement to someone who really has your best interest at heart. HR is being paid by the company. Yes. And they're paid to protect the company. Above all else. Unless you feel you're in danger, you need at least three incidents, Shapiro says. Protect yourself by documenting everything and try and ask your harasser to stop. Only then is it safer to make an official complaint to HR. Only move forward if you really feel like it's so egregious you will have to leave the company if it doesn't get taken care of. Hmm, that's a pretty high bar. It is a high Especially bar. Especially if that paycheck is feeding my children. Retaliation is illegal, but it happens all the time. People have had their careers heavily damaged by doing, you know, quote unquote, the right thing. They just didn't know how to do it the right way. Next, how you should talk to your children about sexual harassment. Stay with us. Gretchen Carlson used to be an early riser. Now she's up late at night thinking about her kids and yours. I have often said that I thought it was important to work more for my son than for my daughter. Because I want my son, when he gets into the workplace, to respect his female colleagues in the same way that he looks at his mama. I don't talk to him about the nitty gritty details. He gets it. 11-year-old Christian has inherited his dad's love of sports. While 13-year-old Kaya has apparently taken on mom's musicianship. What have you told her about the challenges she may face as a woman in the workplace? Right. I'm not talking to her about anything negative right now. I'm building her up. That's my goal. Thank you.